Hello and welcome to another GCSE revision video and in this video we're going to be looking at understanding data specifically we're going to be focusing on tally charts and frequency tables okay so to start with tally charts are basically just a table for want of a better word um, made up of tally marks now tally marks sometimes known as a five bar gate number system is a method of quickly counting and grouping data into groups of five so you simply take a little stroke vertically it looks almost like a, a sort of a number one but you just make a vertical stroke and then the next time you see the piece of data you, you make another vertical stroke and then another and then another and that's how you count when you've got up to four vertical strokes you put a diagonal line as if you're crossing the whole lot out and that makes a group of five and then you start again with the one two three four and then you put a cross through the four to make another group of five and then when you're counting them all you're doing is counting the groups of five so five ten fifteen twenty and so on and then you count the individual ones left over now at this point you might be wondering what's the point of learning a whole new system of counting when i could just count normally the way i do well you're actually right if you've got a small amount of data and all the time in the world and no pressure it's probably easier to just count it the way you're used to counting but if you have to count up a large amount of data in a short amount of time under an awful lot of pressure the possibility of miscounting is quite high and this system actually proves itself to be an awful lot quicker and an awful lot easier and an awful lot more reliable okay so let's create a tally chart and see why they can actually be a little bit useful bear in mind this is actually a small sample just so that you understand how tally charts work they really come into their own when you've got much much larger groups of data but for hypothetical purposes let's pretend that I enjoy bird watching and want to keep a record of the birds that visit my garden over the course of a two hour session of watching Here's my raw data. <gasps> finch, pigeon, seagull, pigeon, pigeon, seagull, seagull, finch, robin, robin, magpie, 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 finch, seagull, seagull, magpie, crow, seagull, sparrow, and I do hope Blue Gel doesn't decide to make a nightcore or anti-nightcore version of that. Now, that actually is quite boring to have to read out, and it's cumbersome to have to read out, and it's quite difficult to make sense of what we've got there so is there a more intelligible way that we can present this data in the form of some kind of useful information All right so here's my data and what I'm going to do is try to set this up as a tally chart so the first word that I come across here is finch or the first bird that or hypothetical bird that visited my hypothetical garden uh, is a finch so I'm going to start my chart by actually I'm going to label it bird and then I'm going to put finch underneath bird and since it's my first finch I'm going to put a little tally mark next to finch in fact I could if I wanted to put the word tally here actually I won't bother to neaten it up, I'll neaten it up later okay so the next bird that visited my garden is pigeon although if I was technically correct I should have said hypothetical bird I have no idea what birds visited my garden because I'm not going to spend two hours sitting watching birds although I have a great deal of respect for people who do and I'm going to put another tally mark next to the pigeon 
So then the next one is a seagull. So I'm going to create another category called seagull. And again, another tally mark. And now we've got a pigeon. Well, we've already got one pigeon, so we can just put another tally mark next to pigeon. And then the next bird is a pigeon, so we just put another tally mark next to pigeon. And then the next one along is a seagull, so we put a mark next to seagull. And then there's another seagull, so we put a mark next to seagull. And then the next one is a finch, so I'm going to put a mark next to finch. And then we've got a robin. Well, we haven't got any robins so far, so let's pop robin down. And robin deserves a tally mark. And look, another robin's come, so maybe that's that first robin's mate. Okay, so now we get a magpie. So we don't already have any magpies. That's the first magpie to visit my garden. So here's magpie. And a tally mark to show there's one magpie. Oh, and look, magpie's got a friend. Actually, two friends. So two more tally marks. And then comes another finch, so another tally mark next to the finch. And then a seagull comes, so that's another seagull. Now I've got one, two, three, four seagulls, so when this next seagull comes, I just put a line through my five-bar gate. And now a magpie comes, so that makes four magpies. And then a crow turns up. Oh, a crow turned up. And another seagull, would you believe it? Do I live by the seaside by any chance? No, this is purely hypothetical. And then a sparrow shows up. And we don't have any sparrows, so we'll create another category for sparrow. And that's the end of my two hour bird watching. So I now have a tally chart showing how many of each bird visited my garden, which is a little bit more intelligible than the raw data that I had. And here's a slightly neater version of the tally chart that I just drew up. As you can see, it's a considerable improvement on just the raw data but even so it's still a little bit difficult to read so is there any way we can improve on this tally chart okay well one simple way that we can improve on this tally chart is simply to count up the number of tally marks so let's put another column here and let's call it I won't call it count, I'm going to call it frequency because that's what it is. For those of you taking physics and think that, f well, you, you know that frequency is the reciprocal of the time, or 1 over seconds is hertz, which is a measurement of frequency. Uh, it's not the number of counts per second or events per unit time, uh, as physicists understand the word frequency. Uh, for statisticians, frequency is just basically a count of how many times something occurs. So bear that in mind if you're doing both maths and physics that to the in the maths exam the word frequency means somewhat a bit different to what it means if you're doing a physics exam.
I really don't want to confuse you, but these words do have different definitions in both subjects. Okay, so our frequency table, we're going to show, we've got Finch there, we've got three tally marks, so we just write in the number three. Again, for Pigeon, we've got three tally marks, so we write in the number three. Now, with Seagull, we can count that very easily. We don't have to count up each mark. We've got a five-bar gate there, so that's five. And then there's one tally mark there, so that makes six. And then for the robin, we can see easily that there's two tally marks there. For the magpie, there's four. So you see with this five bar gate system, it makes it a lot quicker and easier to count. And if we want, we can actually put a total. So it makes it even clearer how many birds visited my hypothetical garden, or how many hypothetical birds visited my hypothetical garden. So we've got 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14, 14 plus 4 is 18, 19, 20. So 20 birds visited my garden. Well, simply by counting the tally marks, and we know how to count them really easily because we've got those that nice five bar gate system we can draw up a simple frequency table and we can even improve on that slightly by giving the totals at the bottom okay so we're not married to the idea of expressing a frequency as just a numerical count uh, the word frequency is considerably looser than that in, in statistics. We could, for example, express frequency as a percentage of the total number of birds. So, for example, what I could have done is improve on my table a little bit and put frequency as a percentage. Okay, so we've got three birds out of a total of 20, so that's 3 over 20 times 100 over 1. Well, that can cancel out, and that becomes a 5. So that's just 3 times 5, which is 15. So that would be 15% of the birds that visited my hypothetical garden is um, a finch. Uh, of course, the, if there's three pigeons, then that's also 15%. So if there's six seagulls, well, six is just two times three, so two times 15 is 30. So 30% 30 of the birds that visited my garden are seagulls. And two are robins. Well, two times five is ten, so that's just ten percent. And four is two times two, so two times ten is twenty percent. And of course, if two is ten percent, then one must be five percent. Now, if I've done my sums right, these will add up to 100. So 15 plus 15 is 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. 60 plus 10 is 70. 70 plus 20 is 90. 90 plus 5 is 95. 95 plus 5 is 100. So, yes, the figures do add up. From that frequency table, we could then go on to do all sorts of fancy stuff, like express our information as, say, a bar chart. Or if I was feeling a bit artistic, maybe a fancy pictogram. Or perhaps if I wanted to emphasise the relative proportions as a pie chart. All of which we will look at in future videos. Uh, for now, I'd like to wish you all the best with your revision and all the best with your exams, and I'll see you in another video.